You're listening to The Jam Pro Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is award-winning documentary film producer, Spencer Proffer. Welcome back to the show, Spencer. Thanks, Jen. Good to see you again. Oh, it's good to see you. From back east to Santa Barbara, it's a good one. (laughs) <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I'm loving Santa Barbara. Just loving it. It's, it's a great place. I, we're going to talk about your new, you have so many things going on. So it's a question of where we start. But the most important one is your new documentary, America Pie, American Pie, The Day the Music Died. And I want to tell you, I, I couldn't stop singing that song with an earworm last night going over. It still is this morning, too. Um, it, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful documentary. It really is, Spencer. You've done a fabulous job with it. Uh, it's so our audience knows, I mean, they should know, but uh, tell the audience a little bit about what uh, American Pie, The Day the Music Died is all about. Well, what it's about is a song that's permeated pop culture from the time that Don McLean wrote it brilliantly when he was coming up in the uh, early 70s. And it stuck around and it has been a number one song and sold over 50 million copies around the world because it's touched people's hearts, souls, and curiosity. And what we've done with Don's complicity and blessing and the help of a whole good team that I've put together from his manager to the team that I use on my work, we're really taking a journey into how the song has touched people's minds, hearts, and souls. There's some reveals to what Don meant when he talked about the jester, when he talked about the king, the crown, all these things that I'm not going to reveal on this interview, but you need to tune into my partners at Paramount Plus, who are the most fantastic streaming company I've ever worked with, and that you can find out uh, July 19th, Paramount Plus. Dial in and subscribe. Yes, definitely. I work for them, and I don't have enough stock but I'm saying it out of my heart. Well, good, because I was always, I was going to ask, where can people watch this? Now we know, but we'll repeat that again towards the end of the interview so people know where they can watch this. Well, they can see it, by the way, Jan, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but they can actually see it a little before because we're doing a two-night event at National Amusement Theaters uh, three or four days before we premiered of Paramount Plus, and we're doing a Academy Golden Globe Award run in theaters. Um, I think it's July 8th through the 14th. So we're going to go that, the um, National Amusements event nights, and then Paramount Plus is going to do day and date about 20, 25 countries around the world. Very proud of the way that everybody has coalesced. I give Bruce Gilmer and his team, he's president of music at uh, Paramount Mm -hmm. and Viacom, a tremendous amount of props and kudos for helping me put this all together. It's amazing how you're rolling this out. It's a a phenomenal way that you're doing this. It's a little different than most people would uh, roll out a documentary. So kudos to you. And that's because you're a game changer in this industry. Uh, You do things very differently. You wanna talk a little bit about that. Well, I just care a lot. I grew up as a poor kid. God bless Clive Davis, hired me out of law school to work for him. I learned a lot, ran a couple of companies and being on the street, raising my two kids, one of which Sterling is a co-producer and he's a brilliant millennial marketing exec. He helped on the ground floor of Vice Media and for 35, he knows more than I'll ever know about marketing. And Bethany Claypool, my head of marketing, used to be at Fathom for 13 years. She really knows her way around. And the Paramount Plus people are just spectacular to work with because they work through all their platforms over at Viacom, which is CBS, you know, Paramount, um, MTV, VH1, CMT. What a fantastic team who really understand music. So this was the natural place to take an iconic song that is an icon of pop music, American Pie, and have them be the ones to bring it to the world. And how did you come to this project? Through people who knew people who knew people. (laughs) Isn't that the way it always is, right? Uh, Yeah, but I met uh, Don's manager who really knows what he's doing. His name is Kurt Webster. And I said, I was interested in doing a, taking a look at the journey of the song 
uh, from then till now, we have three different new versions of the song by young people. Jade Bird is a fantastic 24-year-old singer that we got um, Lady Gaga and Brandy Carlos producer Ed Cobb to produce that. We have a Spanish language version done by Mapio and Jan Carlos, who have well over six figures of socials. Actually, Jan Carlos and his Instagram, I think, or I don't know if it's Facebook, Twitter, millions of followers. So they're going to take it out to the Latino markets and MTV Latin is a big initiative within the Viacom group. All of these things coalesce and work together. And to me, I just love to gloat. I'm very proud to make Don proud because Don is the poet. Don is a brilliant, brilliant talent who has not lost an inch of his talent today, 50 years later. No, and he just won another award. I just got a press release this morning. Uh, he just uh, received the, oh, what is, what is it? I wrote it down. It's the uh, multi-platinum uh, award for American Pie from Universal Music Canada. Yeah. And then he also got a platinum award for Vincent from from uh, Universal Music Canada. That, you know, every I keep getting press releases almost a, a weekly basis about another award that Don McLean has received for American Pie. It's just well, well deserved. And Vincent, where yes. I have a book division, and we've done an illustrated children's book that is just fantastic. It's almost a prequel to the. Uh, inspiration behind American Pie. And it teaches kids about hope, faith, and inspiration and friendship. And we're going to start the Vincent uh, book shortly uh -huh. after that, because that to me is one of the greatest poems and songs in pop culture history. So I give a lot of kudos. I'm very proud to know Don and be next to him because he wrote these things. My job is to help get it to the next stage. And believe me, between Ed Sheeran and Josh Groban, people who've covered Vincent, boy, oh boy, were those good. But American Pie, Garth Brooks has probably paid more homage to that song than any living artist other than Don. And he is front and center in our doc too. And Garth is one of the best artists that has ever touched music. So you put it all together, tune into Paramount Plus and watch it. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You know, the Vincent Van Gogh uh, exhibit is uh, going, is, is here at our Santa Barbara, uh, Art Museum right now, and I've, I've gone to see it. It's, it's amazing. It's really is amazing. It's, it's immersive. It's fantastic. And we're hoping to integrate our you know, Vincent Children's book with that next year. But let's talk about American Pie. I was just going to say, let's go back to American Pie because you have a book out for American Pie also. So let's talk it's about that. An illustrated children's book. I can even, for your viewers, hold up the cover. Yay! <laughs> there it is. And I'm very, very proud to say it's uh, Don has blessed us with the ability to go into his heart, his soul, his mind to find out what he was like as a paper boy growing up in New Rochelle. You see that in our doc, but then you actually see the journey of the song in our doc and the spirit in the book. It's really pretty cool. And how did you get Peter Gallagher to be the narrator for this children's book? Well, Peter Gallagher is one of my favorite talents is both an actor stage and screen. And he was a big part of a show on NBC produced by Lionsgate called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Actually, it was one of my wife's favorite shows and she used to Judy, who is also brilliant, actually, even more so than anybody I know. And uh, she, she thought that the last episode, which was a tribute to the character Peter played, they did a seven minute tribute with all the cast singing American Pie. And it made such logical sense to get in touch with Peter, which I was able to learn from him that he had seen Don McLean when he was in college performing American Pie. So we worked out, oh, it's just serendipitous. So we worked it out, he came to LA. I actually took him in the studio, produced it myself and he did a wonderful job. We filmed him, so he's in the dock as well as reading the book that will come out through IPG and Audible. So everything kind of helps everything else, all a tribute to Don and his song. Yeah, and it's, 
how pervasive the song is and how all the different generations. You have, you know, young people who are familiar with the song singing it and you have, you know, people in their 80s who are singing this song. I mean, it's, it's cross, it crosses all boundaries. There's no one who doesn't, you know, know this song and doesn't love it and, um, and knows all the words to it. I don't remember the words to any songs. But this well, you song. know what, not that it's a campfire song, but I think it's universal. And yeah. I'm hoping that MTV International and Paramount Plus will work with a couple of territories where if they're English speaking, it's clear. If not, the, the translations like the Spanish version that Mafio and Giancarlo did, those lyrics, those spirits translate to all countries, all people. And again, a tribute to Don for being the poet that he is. So yeah. very, very proud to be the uh, gatekeeper, not the gatekeeper, he and Kurt Webster are the gatekeepers, but the propeller to bring it out. Thank you, Paramount Plus, for, for believing in the vision. All right, but where did you get some of the archival footage you have of Don actually writing the song. I mean, it just sort of flowed from him. It was like a God-given, uh, you know, it was just almost like, you know, the angels and God were just sort of, you know, using him as a funnel for the song, it appears, because he said it came out so quickly. Uh, talk well, about, where did you find all that footage? I didn't find it. I can't take credit. I give Don and Kurt credit. They found the footage. Now, Mark Mormon, my director, and his staff, and Nick Webb, our editor, knew how to put it and integrate it into the storytelling. And we did it in a very logical way. So we cut back, we cut in, we go to Clear Lake, we see where Buddy Holly's plane crashed, we talk to Richie Valens, you know, sister. It's, it's poignant, it's historical, but it's not a Wikipedia entry. It's cinematic. Our director is a very polished cinematographer. And so he personally shot a lot of this. And um, I don't know, I feel very blessed to be, have been able to assemble a team to bring Don's vision forward to hopefully 50 years from now. Well, I think the song will always be around. You know, here we are 50 years later having this wonderful discussion longer about the song. Us, longer than us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about heritage, I'm all about legacy, and I'm all about, you know, and this song is a legacy song. Don's a legacy artist who has never lost his mojo, so I'm very, very proud to be next to him. Uh, yeah, and, you know, the fact that, you know, Richie Valens, the big bopper, and Buddy Holly, who all died together, um, you know, if it wasn't for their song, I mean, though they were so well known and everything during that era, it was 1959, I believe, when they died. Um, but this song has kept their 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 um, spirits alive all these years too, and that's what's really the testament to this, you know, too. That he's helped keep them alive. They might have just been a footnote in music history, perhaps, had it not been for the song. Why, well, that's why we decided with Don's blessing, not to call it American Pie, but to call this the day the music died, because that being the title is truly a testament to it was, but the song is not, it's a tribute to Buddy Holly, but it's not about Buddy Holly. If you listen to eight minutes, we're not doing eight minutes of a Buddy Holly tribute. It's a whole journey that you take you listen to the lyric, you hear it, you might interpret it differently than somebody in Tuscaloosa and somebody in Saigon. But the bottom line is, it will touch everybody's soul because there's something in it for everybody. And you see that in our film. I definitely do. Let's talk about, so Richie Haven's sister um, is in this. Um, talk a little bit about that meeting that they had. Um, I wasn't there, it was in Clear Lake, Iowa, which is where the Surf Ballroom is located. Surf Ballroom was the last place that Buddy played, and adjacent to the Surf Ballroom is the Field of Dreams that I think Costner, who is brilliant, the Yellowstone was one of the best shows on TV, again, through the Paramount family. Um, but that's where the plane crashed. And so that's where Connie Valens lives, and that's where Don McLean played a tribute concert just recently for the 50th anniversary. So they met, and what you see in our film is a result of that meeting, which is very poignant and very heartfelt and very pure. Yeah, it really is very touching. You know, that meeting there. There's so many wonderful things in this film. Um, as you say, you have Garth 
Brooks, um, you've got John Mayer, you've got Bon Jovi, you've got Madonna, uh, and the list goes on and on of all the different artists who have covered the song. Um, well, and- I'm, I'm very proud of the new young artist. Willa Amai is a 17 year old new artist that is produced by Linda Perry. She's in the film. Jade Bird is fantastic. I think she is the next gen superstar. She does a great cover. It's coming out as a single through Glass Note, I think on June 3rd in many countries around the world. Glass Note is a great independent label that has, I think, Phoenix and Mumford and Sons, and Jade is busting out. And then the Spanish language version by Mapio and Jen Carlos. It's just great. It's it's kind of reggae tinged, but it shows that this song can be dressed up many suits of colors, you know, many suits of clothes and many colors to, to permeate, you know. Yes, it definitely can be. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, what was it called, the lip dub? The lip dub. <laughs> the lip dub. I've never heard that expression before, so is that a, a word? I never heard that before this. Okay, and, good. I'm not the only one then. All right. Oh, no. I never even knew what it was until, I think it was Kurt um, Don's uh, manager actually and Don said, you know, in 2012, the city of Grand Rapids was having some PR issues and they felt that the song permeated the spirit of the unity of the city. So like the opening scene in La La Land, but this happened eight years before that, the entire town congregated under the production auspices of a couple of Rob Bliss and um, Scott and a couple of uh, very visionary young guys and they got 5,000 people going through the streets of the city, singing American Pie, filming it. And there's firemen, there's Indians, there's doctors, there's lawyers. And it really shows the applicability of the song to a community and to a culture. And they filmed that. And I think they got millions of YouTube views, probably the most successful aggregation of people singing a song in a city. And that's part and parcel in our film. And the, a young group called Home Free, that's an acapella group, actually talks about that and how they did an acapella version, new version with Don as well, which is featured. So it just shows the many different faces of this song, which is fantastic. It is fantastic. And, you, and you're now working on a Broadway show also about this song? Yeah. We have plans to, I'm working with two very seasoned, experienced Broadway impresarios and producers, Corey Brunish and Russell Miller. And once this thing gets out, when Don comes back from his world tour, we are going to develop this doc and bring it forward into the stage with some more original songs from Don. Yeah. Wonderful. I can't wait to see that. I want to come to the opening for sure, Spencer. That's going to be in a couple of years, so just stay healthy. All right, <laughs> definitely. Well, listen, I think you're the busiest working man in Hollywood right now. So you've got some other amazing projects going on also. Can we, let's talk a little bit, can we talk about, you can tell me what you can tell me. I know some things are yeah, highly I've, secret I've, about <laughs> your Elvis Presley anyone, project. Anyone who reads and is internet savvy can go to my company site, Meteor 17, www.meteor17. Proud of that company and my people there. But uh, we're in production. Uh, thank you, Steve Bender, who was the visionary director who helped bring Elvis's career to the, another level when he directed the comeback special, the infamous NBC comeback special. We are making a documentary for my friends at Paramount Plus on the making of that, bringing Steve's book that he wrote about it to life. Baz Luhrmann graced us with the foreword to the book and his movie, Steve, act as a consultant to his film, which Warner Brothers is putting out on June 24th. And we're putting all of this together as the next project on the heels of American Pie and the day that music died. Very proud of that. John Scheinfeld, who directed, <clears throat> excuse me, my John Coltrane film. Right. I've had special. John on the show before. I've had John on the show. Yeah, when yeah, he's a fantastic he's director. great. I had him on for the Sergio Mendez documentary that he did and I had Sergio on with him so that was a yeah wonderful interview I, 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 and actually I met them at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival and uh, they put on a show well uh, John didn't put on the show but <laughs> Sergio Mendez put on the show for us. Great. Well see Dave Harding who worked with me as a producer 
on this film has been working with John for over five years. They, he worked on my Coltrane film. They worked on a Hope You Dance film that I made with Maya Angelou, Brian Wilson, and Graham Nash. So I'm, I'm a big believer in people who like each other, trust each other, and are really talented. Work together, you stay together. I think Scorsese's had the same. Thelma Schumacher, editor for all of his films. Steven Spielberg has used John Williams to score his films through all of his great history. So I'm also a believer. You find a team that works that like and respect each other, and you got each other's backs. And that's what we've done here. And we've had a lot of support from Don and his manager, and in particular from the people at Viacom and Paramount Plus. Bruce Gilmer is the EP of this film. He's the president of music at the studio there, and just fantastic people to work with on a regular basis. Yeah, and you know, well, we have the new Elvis movie um, opening up. I think it's going to be at the Cannes Film Festival, if I'm not mistaken. And there's already Oscar buzz about the Elvis, uh, the Baz Luhrmann uh, film about Elvis, and the That's young. That's not ours. Ours is a cousin. Right, Our... I understand that, but it's going to. It's nice to have you know if that's the conversation that people start having about Elvis and then your documentary comes in come after that. It next year. Absolutely. Yeah, it'd be, it's perfect. It's just, you know, perfect timing again. I can't say that there's not an accident here because there's not, it's by design. Um, I, I can tell you I'm working on a Stephen Schwartz uh, journey documentary. Stephen wrote Wicked, Godspell, Pippin, and Universal is making a uh, double feature of Wicked starring Cynthia Revo and uh, Ariana Grande. And Stephen has blessed me with the right to be his partner to, to talk about a huge journey, not just Wicked, but Godspell, Prince of Egypt, um, Pocahontas, a lot of his work, but that's in the oven. And um, I'm really just proud to be next to visionary talent, be it Steve Bender, be it Don McLean, be it, you know, lots of others, because I kind of am a fan of their work. I think they're a fan of your work, uh, too, because, you know. Yeah, my job is to bring their work forward. It has been. I'm just looking at it through a different lens. Now that I'm older, I got glasses. I can, <laughs> I can see clearer now. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? Yeah, you got glasses, too, so it's all right. Hey, I noticed in the background uh, uh, that you have some... African, it looks like African mask from here. Uh, and you, I know you have a connection with... Uh, Johannesburg. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you're doing over there? Well, I'm a big, big fan of African culture, a big believer in uh, the Mandela anti-apartheid struggle. In 1997, I quarterbacked the music for Showtime to a movie called Mandela and de Klerk, starring Sidney Poitier and Michael Caine, mm -hmm. and I actually did the score in South Africa, in a tree house in Johannesburg. And I met a lot of wonderful people there. And flash forward to the Coltrane film, one of John's biggest albums is called The Blue Train. And there is a blue train, like an Orient Express quality train, going from uh, Pretoria, capital of South Africa, to Cape Town. I premiered our film on the blue train. I brought Ronnie Laws, Eloise Laws, and a couple of great jazz artists over. They jammed with some great jazz artists headed by Don Laka, um, who's Hugh Masekela's producer in South Africa. And I set up an office in Johannesburg with a very dear friend of mine. And got, I'm very close to a guy named Papi Molasante. Papi was the chairman of Telecom, which is the AT&T of South Africa. And he's been my consigliere and my guru with all things connected. And we're working with the Mandela Children's Hospital, doing charitable work for them, where Poppy helped Nelson Mandela get that going. And there's, I'm producing a number of media projects with some of the leading people of South Africa to bring it forward. Because I like the concept, like Quincy did with China, and like Richard Branson has done, I like bringing cultures together. That's why there's a Spanish language version of American Pie. And there will be some South African produced projects that I'm gonna to bring to America. Now, I, I told you that South Africa is near and dear to my heart too. So um, yeah, that's wonderful. Love what you're doing. Absolutely love what you're doing. Okay, before we uh, sadly have to end this conversation, where are, just one more time so everybody knows where they can see uh, the day the music died. The day the music died will premiere. I feel like I'm a 
infomercial here. <laughs> on Paramount Plus on July 19th, and it will probably hit 20 to 30 countries at the same time. But anyone watching or listening to your show, Jan, is probably in America. So watch it on Paramount Plus. Or if you're in the Northeast, go to the National Amusement Theaters because they will do an event night, I believe, on the 14th and 17th of July, just to tee it up. And um, I think people will enjoy it. It's not a generic Wikipedia doc. It really has a lot of heart and soul to it. It's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful documentary. Well, congratulations on it. Well, thank, you. Well, thank you for having me back. And I can't help myself, but once I open my mouth, I keep talking. But <laughs> you I, make but I care. You make my you make my job easy. <laughs> you know what? I like to part. I like to pass on information because I care about the subject matter. Of, why bother? Why do the work if you don't enjoy the process? Exactly. 100%. Well, Spencer, it's such a pleasure having you back on the show okay. and uh, seeing you this time. Last time it was just audio, so it's nice to see you this time. So thank you so much, and I wish you much success with the day the music died. Fingers crossed, but I'm proud. Listen, if it's a noble failure, it'll be that, but I don't think so. I don't I think, think so, not at all. This thing has a shot of winning awards and doing well for Don and his legacy, which I, I think, think is tremendous. I definitely agree. Thank you. If you have missed any of the Jam Price Show's All About Movies, you can go to my website, thejampriceshow.com, or all my shows are archived. And you can also go wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, the iHeart Podcast Network, uh, Spotify, Google, Apple, you name it, we are there. Also go to my YouTube channel. And while you're there, like us and subscribe and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Jam Price Show. Thank you all for 